Hello everyone, this is Neroni, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. Last time, we ended up killing some chickens, and finding out that Pinello was kidnapped. You know, one of these things is more important than the other, and I'm pretty sure those chickens will be missed. But, Fran's right here outside of the area dome. While Thea is waiting inside, if you've made ready, we leave at once. He feels responsible for what has happened to your friend. Do not think that it is in his habit of doing favors. Well, at least he feels guilt. So welcome to the Aerodome. Interesting thing about the Aerodome is we can actually fly to certain locations in the map. Um, I feel that I should show this off so then I can get rid of that Nalbana cutscene thing too. So, good day sir. This courier counter serves travelers wishing to book a passage to Nalbana. We have the ships fitted with shops and amenities, or if you prefer to sleep during your journey, ships with only private cabins. Whichever you choose, the price is the same. Wow, price the same for coach and luxuriousness. Ah, to be rich. So, go by the leisure cabin. There's a reason for this that you will be seeing. And I'll show off this cutscene a little bit. Just to show it off. Because it's always the same. It never changes. They're always going to be inside this specific kind of airship. But there is a reason why you will want to take Leisure Cabin. Um, and it has to do with something that the international version of the game originally did. But first things first. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome you aboard on behalf of the East Ivalice Company. East India Trading Company. Your captain for your voyage is Mr. Ranton, with Mr. Nickel, his first officer, and I am Chief Steward Chazelle. We have cabins available should you wish to retire for the remainder of your journey, and please let me know if I can be of any service. Koopa. Oh, miss, miss. I've shopped and taken to the sky, and now I'd like to rest in my cabin, Koopo. I'm not having any luck finding one, though. Where are they? You mean the... You mean to rest until we arrive? The cabins are right this way, through the sky saloon. Give your name to the chief steward, and she'll have a room prepared for you. Ah, we never looked in there, Koopo. We thought we might end up on the deck. Thanks for the help. Kupo and his Sikh companion. The best of stories. Now there are a few things you can actually buy early on inside of uh, this area, I believe. Yes, you can buy Gashel Greens, which are basically, you use feed these to chocobos and you can ride them. Yes, you can ride chocobos in this game. And I believe this one is, yes, okay. This fills up over time, but the main reason, and I can't believe I'm actually going to try this. Okay, I got the diamond armlet equipped. There is a very rare chest that spawns on any one of these flights. So we will actually go on deck. I actually want to see if this thing spawns. Knowing my luck, it's not going to because... It is a very low spawn chance. Nope, did not spawn. All right, so what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for a chest. Not any type of chest, but an invisible chest. Yes, there is an invisible chest on this ship. The invisible chest will spawn right around here. This chest is unique and was added into Final Fantasy XII International Zodiac Job Edition. Basically, inside that chest contains the strongest weapon in all of Final Fantasy XII. No weapon comes close to dealing as much damage as that one weapon. It's a very rare spawn, but people on the PS4 version, I believe the PC version is same found a way to be guaranteed this weapon 
if the chest spawns. And that's the caveat. You need the chest to spawn. And it's very hard. See this child running back and forth right here? If the chest spawns, move the camera to around this spot. And after the fourth time the child passes by you going this way, the way the child is running right now, to right over there, they have to reach there four times. It resets the random number generator inside of the actual game for some odd reason. And you will be guaranteed this weapon, which I believe in this game they gave it the name Start and Grunt. I could be wrong, that might be one of the bows, because there are more weapons like this inside of Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age, and inside of the original international version of the game that are contained inside of invisible chests. And what do I mean by the strongest weapon, by the way? You might be thinking, well, oh, is it like the Zodiac Spear from the original Final Fantasy XII, which used to be the strongest weapon in the game? Mm, kind of. Zodiac Spear is, in the original game, I believe, a 150 attack power spear. But inside of this game, I think it's been moved down to 125. The starting grunt, on the other hand, I believe does either 202 to 250 attack damage. Gladius does 56 attack power. Karkata does 92. So with 200 and 2 to 250, you're one-shotting most everything in this game. I am not even joking about that. Obviously, I might go for these weapons for fun, but this actually brings up the fact that I forgot to mention what I was doing off-screen. You might notice Fran and Bosch have a lot of license points. Off screen, I ended up going through trial mode because trial mode is the best way to build up a bunch of license points since they carry over into the main game. Filling out most of Fran's board as well as most of Bosch's board, um, Vaughn still has a little bit more to go as does Balthier. Other things I got. I got the Sword of Kings. This is actually a interesting weapon because there are two of them in the game. Like one for main story and one you get from trial mode. And to my knowledge, if I'm remembering correctly, the one you get in the story doesn't do this much damage. In the original Final Fantasy XII, this sword, this two-handed weapon, did 30 damage in a point in the game where 30 damage is pitiful. Now you can get it through trial mode through level 10 of the trial mode through a rare steel. Believe it or not, this rare steel from this monster also can give you the goddess's magicite. I think the goddess's magicite is actually the rarer one and I did get it once but I was looking for the sort of kings. Because now... Bosch, Bosch, Balthier, and Fran. I need to give her back her bow because I only put on the Sword of Kings because I got another one. I also got these uh, Parallel Arrows. These are a more powerful type of arrow. I got them from a chest inside of Trial Mode as well. So now she does more damage. He does a lot of damage. He already was doing a lot of damage. And he is going to be carrying me throughout most of this game. So yeah. But there is another reason why you would want to take the airships. And really the only reason why you would want to continue to do so. You might notice this gentleman right here talking to the chief steward. What do you want? We're in the middle of a personal and rather important conversation. Get lost. Why don't you? Rand. Is that Rand? Yeah, that's Rand. He's a passenger. Mind your tongue. I apologize for my companion's behavior. We have cabins available if you would like to rest until we make port. Who's this Rand? 
No one, truly, just a gentleman, and I use the term loosely, who does not know when enough is enough. Enough is enough? Ha! Will you listen to her? And I tell you, you defy all reason. What sane woman would decline a proposal of marriage from a man of my birth, stature, incomes, and obvious charms? Eh. I can see where this is going. Can your mother really mean all that to you? I've told you a thousand times, you must forget these people back in old arcades. Get my own mother? The mother who raised my sister single-handedly after my father died in the war? I've never marry a person like you. How many times must I tell you? Dude, take a hint. Seem to share your sister's dislike of the noble house of Lershell. I mean, I would, I would dislike the name if my last name was Lershell too. But what grudge could you possibly harbor against us? You and your brothers are among the most vulgar men I've ever met, and I've known many vulgars, using your father to find out where we work. Speaking of work, I'd better be back to it. If you would kindly take your leave, I have a proper passenger to attend to. Yes, yes, your passengers. An idea comes to mind. Might I interest you in a game of sorts? What manner of game? Last year for your mother's name day. Mother's name day? And it must be in place in Ivalice, like a, how should you say a, it's basically Mother's Day. That's what I'm trying to say. And you and your sisters each sent a gift you'd found along the route to your work, yes? What of it? I'm more concerned than the fact that this person knows this. That's disturbing. This year, I propose each of you gather a flower for your mother, and this boy here informs each of your sisters of the arrangement. If he can deliver this message to every one of them, my brothers and I will abandon all hopes of marriage to you and your sisters. Absurd, you expect a perfect stranger to willingly go from airship to airship delivering this message of yours. She has a point. Six ships, six sisters. Quite a lot of work for someone we don't know. Quite a lot of guild, too. That's about... I mean, considering the fact that I have a lot of guild from loot, but that's still about 1,200 guild for the average person. Better forget the whole business. And me? I'll begin making necessary preparations for our wedding. I'm sorry you've gotten involved in this, sir. If you do see my sisters on the other airships, perhaps you could show them the letter from me. The chief stewards like myself. And we obtained Anne's letter. This is a side quest you can do throughout the entire course of the game. I can't remember the last time I've had more fun. Already, visions of you and your sisters joining the noble house of Lurshell and fill my mind. What an ass. So, Anne's letter is right here. A letter written by Anne, chief steward aboard one of the East Ivalice Company airships. It is addressed to her six sisters, each of whom works a different airship route. There are different airship routes throughout the game, and by the six ships, they mean, say for example, later in the game we'll be going to another location. You can go from that location to Ravanaster, Ravanaster to Nalbana, like we're doing right now, Nalbana to the other destination, and those would each be three ships. It's something along the lines of that. And in the original Final Fantasy XII, I believe I actually already have. No, 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 I don't have it. Um, let me see. It'd be in my licenses. It'd be one of the accessories. Let me see which one. Where's the ruby ring? Where's the opal ring? Boots. Uh, let's see. Let's go with Fran because she's got more. She's got more of the accessories. There it is. The Ruby Ring. That was the original reward for doing all of Anne's letters side quests. Ruby Ring, I believe, inside the original game was immune to poison. But I don't know if it's changed, because 
believe it or not, like I said, I haven't beaten Zodiac Age yet on the PS4 version that I have, and I didn't, as a result, I didn't finish up Anne's Letters side quest because, um, I don't know, I got sidetracked and just didn't finish it on the PS4. So I don't know if they change what the reward is for Anne's Letters side quest. And I also don't know if they change the Ruby Rings status stuff. Because, for example, the Diamond Armlet, uh, they added Thunder Immunity to it inside of Zodiac Age. So, that is possible. I'm going to try and go for the thing one last time. I realize I just spent an entire episode explaining a mechanic and everything that people might not care for. But don't worry, we'll be going to Brugera soon. I just want to see if it'll spawn. Yeah, I was talking. I was you'll know you hit the chest because you'll not be able to go forward and you'll hit it. All right. It's not like I wanted that weapon anyway, because I, like, I know the Karkata already breaks a lot of this game. I don't want to just steamroll through everything. I might just get the weapon as a completionist sort of thing later on in the game or against one hunt in particular that I am dreading but don't worry about me sir my sisters and I are up to the challenge presented by the notorious brothers of the house Lorchelle well he's distracted me from my duties long enough I should say where were we ah yes would you like me to show you to your cabin yes please Let's see, Vaughn, was it? You'll be staying in cabin A53. I hope you enjoyed your journey. And here is the cutscene for the ship landing in a place. Only thing that would be different would be uh, the people showing up in the cutscene because right here in Nalbana, there are a lot of uh, people. I mean, I have to admit, it's pretty ballsy for me to, you know, come back here considering everything but whenever you want to go back to a place simply talk to one of the stewards that would be right here and they would go to all the different locations on the world of Ivalis on the map right there and let's talk to this Imperial headed into town I'll escort you much of the fortress is off limits so let's go along right then this way And now I'll be playing the uh, cutscene. All right, so here is the town of Nalbana. I never really showed this off. This is actually a place you don't need to go to unless you want to do side stuff because all of Nalbana for the town is actually completely, well, not really necessary. Hello, Jovi. My hero, he's gone. 
Well, I'm sure we'll deal with that later. Now, the thing about Nalbana as well, there are different uh, armors that actually appear uh, throughout the game. And early on in the game, you can go to Nalbana as early as when you first go out into the Western Sand. And they will actually have... Uh, this is where I got Pinello's, the rod for Pinello, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to use anything besides that tiny knife. Uh, looks like they got the tier 2 weapons here. This is the guns too. And then there are some more over this way. I can buy gambits now. Uh, there's a town right here. This is where you can buy more magics. Pretty much, if you want to do some things early on, it's best to come here. Gambits won't become purchasable until you end up... Okay, I just need to make sure I need two um, They won't become purchasable until after you learn about them, so keep that in mind. So let's see... Serious magics... Any new magics? Right. It's the gambit shop and there is actually a notice board right here because there isn't a tavern so no new bills posted because we did that beforehand so keep that in mind so that's now gonna like I said completely optional in fact you could actually do a sequence break later in the game that we're gonna be doing it's not really a sequence break it's just an area opening up earlier than it's supposed to and it's actually a good grinding area for me but we won't be able to deal with that until we get to a little bit later in the game. Because by all accounts, we're still in the early stages of the game. And we will head on back to Rabinasta. So I want to go by Leisurecraft. Always got to make sure to go by Leisurecraft. You never know when you'll get the starting grunt. I still don't know if it's the starting grunt. Probably isn't. What am I doing? Skip the cutscene. Right. We're gonna try one time. No dice. We go back inside. And then we finally go to Brugerba. I realize I have spent an entire part just putting off Brugerba. Nope. Okay. And please note, every time that you exit and enter the area, it does reset for the chest because of how Zodiac Age works. You can get multiple starting grunts. You can get six of them. You will be an unstoppable force because it also doesn't require a license actually because it's one of the invisible weapons of the game of which there is one of every weapon a shield and I believe I believe that's it I believe it's only a shield and one of every single one of the weapons of the game uh, they are extremely powerful and don't require anything Yep, show me the cabin. So B41. Alright, and back inside of Rabinasta. As you can see, no Imperial here, but the Bonga is still there. I just wasted about 300 gil. So, here is a Balthier, so... Brugerba's on the sky continent of Darstanis, and the Magicite mine we're looking for is in, the Bru is in Brugerba. If we're going to save the girl, we start there. Are you ready to leave? Sorry about that, folks. I had to go and look for something that once belonged to my grandfather. So, why don't you tell me about Brugerba? 
Don't get out of Damascus much, do you? Brujeba is a small city-state that thrives on the export of particularly fine magicite. It's ruled by Marquis Ondor, who, by staying in the Empire's good graces, has managed to stave off Imperial invasion. That's always good. But anyway, guys, I'm going to actually end it off right here. Going to blue ball you on Brujerba. But next time, we'll be heading off to the Sky City of Brujerba. See you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this content and wish to see more, why not check out one of these other playlists that are on the side right over here. Also, be sure to leave a like, comment, and possibly subscribe if you wish to keep up to date with the channel going forward. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you all for future episodes.